up y'all as you can see i'm in a different setting and that is because i'm actually in california right now i'm not in my bathroom my elephant is not behind me and the reason why i'm in fornia of the cali is because i'm filming the next season of water now ah, wally, 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 wally. yeah girl so child Nick them got us on a strict ass motherfucking schedule, so I'm trying to squeeze this in between the in between of the in between, child. Ooh, let me pat my titties. Am I? Ooh, Lord, child. Um, I'm trying to get y'all a little glamorization or whatever under these circumstances, child. They got us in these prison rooms. <laughs> let me not say that, but they have us in these rooms that are built like dorm rooms, sort of. There's a kitchen and. It's a lot going on because we have to social distance, but I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity and I hopefully make you guys proud on the next season. I've been so nervous during rehearsals and tomorrow's our first filming day, so ah, pray for you, sister. <laughs> anyway, let's just go ahead and get into this motherfucking blue therapy show. Now, a lot of y'all have been asking me to talk about it and I was waiting for the conclusion of the conclusion because I didn't know what to conclude until I had seen the conclusion. And, and you know what I'm saying? Upon the conclusion, I conclude that Paul is a bottom feeding ass, turd faced, raisin donut shaped ass bitch. You are a bitch. You are a fucking bitch. And Choma deserves way better. First of all, Paul, you are very controlling. First of all, what the fuck are y'all in therapy for? Because as I was watching all these damn weeks, Choma, I didn't hear nothing come out of your mouth that told me that this relationship was worth fighting for. Like, what are you fighting for? Like, I don't, I didn't hear nothing that made me say, okay, she should be fighting for this relationship. From the get-go, this man don't like you going out and having fun with your friends. This man doesn't think that you could be an influencer without him. He feels like the person behind the camera is the most important part. This man wants you to take care of his sister's kid. Like his sister can come up, come over, disrespect you, drop, drop, drop her kids off to you, and you'll take care of them because those kids are the kid. I don't know if it's, it's several kids or one kid. I can't remember. I shit, I don't give a fuck. Um, that child or them kids is like his kids, so you need to take care of them as such. Meanwhile, this is the same motherfucker who made you get an abortion, and we find that out on the concluding episode. Like, girl, this is a lot. The man don't want you out with your friends. He don't want you dancing around. He don't want you working with niggas because he knows these. Because this nigga used to talk to a bitch. He used to talk to. Like, he has all these restrictions for you. What is he doing in the relationship that actually makes you happy? How does he show you your value? How does he honor you on a daily basis? How does he speak life into you? How does he, he's emotionally abusive to you. And the motherfucker even dogged your food out. Not saying that it didn't taste good, but he was upset that you were cooking him Nigerian food. Like, what the fuck? I have, n I have never met a Nigerian nigga who said they didn't they, they want to eat jollof. Like, you don't want jollof? You don't want all the native cookings? Like, I've never met a Nigerian nigga, Jamaican nigga, Haitian nigga, uh, Bahamian nigga, um, Ghanaian nigga. Like, I've never met any nigga from the diaspora who didn't like their native food. Like, what the fuck is going, what's going on, what's going on, what, what's going on with, with this motherfucker right here? He's different. And then it's like, what the fuck is his job title? I got all these clients and I have to make sure that they're good. I have to make sure that I hang around with this. So he's frivolously spending money, but he doesn't want you spending money on your dreams. Choma, why are you here? Why are you here? Like this last episode to me, I'm like, okay, see, I didn't even need to see this last episode to see that you were in a manipulative relationship. Like you could see it from the first episode. But when she dropped that bomb about they were on a break and they were having sex and she got pregnant and he basically talked her into getting an abortion. And, and it's so funny because he's like, oh, I mean, it was a conversation where we both reached a conclusion. No, 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 no. You told her that you did not want this baby. Okay. 
And so she went and she had the abortion. You told her, listen, I ain't got the time to be taking care of you and the baby. I got these clients. Mind you, what the fuck is, what, what the fuck do you do for these clients? Like, what is his actual job title? It sounds like to me that you are a fucking concierge slash pimp. You're basically like the nigga that everybody goes to when they're in your city. You make sure that they have their car, uh, fancy cars. You make sure that they're in the fanciest hotels. You make sure that when they go to, to the club, um, that the, the baddest bitches in the city are there. So you're pimping your local bitches to be in their section. Like, uh, like what actually do you do? I don't know. Maybe somebody can drop down in the comments and tell me what actually he does. Because I didn't catch any real job title from this man it's giving uh it's giving uh, you don't have a job it's giving um scammer it's giving i don't know i don't know what it's giving but it's not giving actual jobs it's giving you hustle and I, I don't knock hustlers shit i don't knock scammers i don't knock, i don't knock anybody trying to make a coin but what I do not is niggas like you pitching yourself like you're some type of high value nigga and you're not. You're actually a dusty. You are an actual dusty by nature and you're dusty. Like, like you're, you're an actual dusty. I don't get like dusties to me are not just niggas that don't have any jobs. Like dusty, dusties to me are niggas who lack character you lack character you're not charismatic like i'm not i don't see anything about this man that would make me stick around choma didn't present anything that would make me say okay girl you know what fight for your man that's a good man savannah fight for your man no girl it's giving um get up stand up <laughs> stand up for your right it's giving um girl leave him alone Take your bags and get the hell on. Okay, I just showed my age. I just showed y'all I'm 30 with that damn song. Okay, um, it's giving. It's giving leave. Now, <laughs> that's what it's giving. Um, what else could I say? I mean, there's really no need to really dissect it much. Then he had the nerve to bring his sister to the therapy session. Bitch, don't nobody want to see your fucking dusty ass sister in the therapy session. Like, Paul, you doing too much. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. And you not cute. Like, it's like, it, it, you have horrible character. You have an ugly ass personality. And you not cute. Your hairline's receding. You're dusty. <laughs> like, ugh. Choma, you gave this man too much too early. That's your problem. You gave this man too much too early. A lot of y'all be performing all these wifely duties for niggas who have not wifed you. And I'm not saying like when you get in a relationship to not do for your nigga. Like I'm not saying like don't be there for your nigga. Don't show your nigga what type of woman you are. Don't be feminine. Don't be like, yes, but you have to set up boundaries. You have to set boundaries. Y'all is doing too much too early. What the fuck are you doing taking care of his sister's kid? No. No, no, especially to a motherfucker who's treating you like that. No, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I hope you left. I hope you left. Um, Jamil and Deborah. Jamil, I actually was rooting for your ass. I was at, is it me or Jamil was the biggest disappointment here? Cause see, at least Paul, we knew his dusty ass, his old fucking pink lip, um, mosquito looking ass <laughs> was a fucked up individual. But Jamil, you actually were the biggest disappointment here because I was actually rooting for you. Other than you having that dumbass clubhouse uh, addiction, I kind of put that to the side because you know what, the children nowadays, y'all y'all be on Clubhouse all the damn time. I deleted that app. That shit is so annoying. That app is so fucking annoying to me. Y'all motherfuckers be on there early in the morning, late at night, talking about nothing. Y'all ain't talking about shit, okay? Um, so I thought that was whack, but I get it. It's a good networking app, so I was giving you that understanding. But Deborah, Deborah, you have, although you were right about him being a cheater in the end, 
you have a lot of work to do. Okay. First of all, drop that in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this. If I have to even feel like I need to go through your phone, I don't need to be your girlfriend. That's point blank, the period. Ain't no parentheses, ain't no commas, ain't no hyphens, ain't no semicolons. If I even feel like I have to go through your phone, we're breaking up. I'm go, like insane. Go, but the truth remains. My wig is gone. Me and my wig is gone. I'm not sticking around for this shit. I've never gone through a man's phone. I believe in privacy. I believe that you and your man should have privacy. I don't believe in having agency over my man's body, what he does, how he does it, when he does it. You have your life, I have mine. We are in a relationship, here are the boundaries, here is how you don't fuck up, here is how you do. You fuck up, I'm gone. That's it. Okay? The fact that you were going through this man, you need to go through this man's phone. You need to pop up on him. Girl, that is not a relationship. That is slavery, bitch. That is slavery. And I'm, I'm Haitian. I am allergic to slavery. I do not do slavery, okay? That is slavery, honey. That's a no-no. Um, another no-no, too, is, you know, in the beginning, in the, in the first couple of episodes... Both of you guys were talking about like what you bring to the relationship. And sis, you didn't bring anything to the relationship. Let's just be honest. Like, you're a gorgeous girl. But the man was talking about how he's he does this and that for you. You ask for gifts, he gives it to you. He's also trying to save up for a home. You know, like he's there for you. But you weren't there for anything but gifts. Like, that's what you wanted. Like, you wanted gifts. You see what type of lifestyle I live. You know the brands I want. So you need to be buying me this. You need to be buying me that. That's cool, sis. Like, I'm all for, you know, getting money out of niggas, getting gifts out of niggas, getting trips out of niggas. But if you're in a relationship, like, if you're just talking to a nigga and you're just trying to get a bag out of the, the nigga, that's cool. Like, I'm all for that. But you're in a relationship. And in a relationship, you have to bring something to the table. You have to. Like, yes, as women, we are the table. But what is on your table? What is on your table? What are you bringing? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you bringing affection? Are you attentive? Can you listen? Can you take leadership? What is your vision for the relationship? Where are y'all going? What are y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't mention anything. I was looking at him. I was looking at Jamil most of the time. Like, okay, what is he? It's like y'all, it's like the couples needed to swap to me. Because it's like, you're not bringing anything, but you want this man to spend all this money on you. And it's like, girl, get yourself a sugar daddy. It's, it's apps for that. It's websites for that. Get yourself a sugar daddy. Somebody who don't want shit out of you but your pussy, and they'll spend bread on you. There are relationships out there that are set up like that. Get you a sugar daddy. That's it, sis. But if you're trying to be in a relationship, there has to be something that you're bringing to the table. You can't expect to meet this man's family, meet this man's parents. But you're not, this man hasn't really met you. Y'all are in a relationship, but he has not met you. He's trying to crack you open, and he has not been able to because all you're interested in is surface level shit. And I'm sorry, that shit gets old, ladies. Like, we have to do better. We do. Who doesn't want to be with a nigga with money? Raise your hand if y'all want to be with, with a nigga with money. Okay, nobody raised their hands. Everybody want to be with a nigga with money. Okay? Everybody wants that. At the same time, what do you actually want out of the relationship, though? What do you bring to the nigga with money? Because, see, niggas with money... They have ADD. It's a line, a never ending line of bitches everywhere who want to be with them just because they have money. So what are you going to bring to the table that's different from the rest of these bitches? That's a whole other video for another day. Um, 
Jamil, you full of shit. You full of shit. You were still training your ex-girlfriend. And here's what here's what I think happened. And I'm not taking up for your ass, but here's what I think happened. Deborah was getting on your fucking nerves. Deborah was getting on your fucking nerves. So you say, you know what? I'm gonna start linking with my ex again. I'm gonna start linking with my ex again. You did not slip and fall into your ex's pussy, Jamil. Please cut the shit. That whole, oh, we were in a car and all of a sudden it happened in the car. Bitch, it happened in the car, the gym, your house, her house, y'all mama house, the babysitter house, her daddy house. It happened everywhere. Bitch, stop playing with me. I am not fucking stupid. I was born in the morning, but not this motherfucking morning. Okay. You did not slip and fall into your ex's pussy. Let's not do this today. Okay. So, Deborah actually turned out to be right about you, but I also feel like her not being accessible emotionally, her not being available in the relationship did push you into the arms of someone else. I do feel like, but I'm not, I'm not putting you off the hook because here's the thing, before you did that, you could have just broke up with Deborah. That's it. There's no excuse. There's no fucking excuse. Both of y'all couples got on my fucking nerves. I did not understand what the therapy was for because y'all, both of these couples were whack. They were over. Like, am I the only one who feels like this? Drop down in the comments and let me know if you even think the couples even had to get therapy. It just was a waste. It was entertaining though. It was entertaining though. And then I hear that. And then I also hear that it was fake. Apparently, Paul has been going around saying that it was fake, that he's an actor. Paul, it ain't fake. The only thing fake about it um, is your imaginary hairline, okay? Um, you look stupid. You feel dumb. Everybody's been dragging your ass and calling you everything but the child of God that you ain't because you were, you were a child of Satan. And so now you want to go around saying that you were active. Bitch, please. Just let it all blow over. But in the meantime, we're going to drag your ass till we can't drag you no more. Drop down in the comments and let me know what you guys thought about blue therapy. Do you feel that the couple should stay together? Do you feel that it's fake? Um, what were some things that you saw in these couples that you felt like, you know what? I need to check that. I need to check that and make sure that I'm not doing this in my relationship. Let me know. Drop down in the comments. Let me know. I got to run to set. So that's it, y'all. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.